Now, so it's my pleasure now to uh, introduce our next two presenters, Anna Rosario and Jonathan Tanahavasana. Um, who now um, we've got a full bio, and just remember on the app the bios of all our speakers are available there. Anna, you, you have uh, connection. Oh God, it's not coming. There it is. Yeah, so Anna's worked as a registered nurse and clinical nurse consultant, brain injury at, at the Sydney Children's Hospital network before moving to clinical governance unit working on clinical and non-clinical improvements and initiatives. Excuse me, <clears throat> Jonathan, you've had over 15 years with New South Wales Ambulance working in sustainable access and um, patient, uh, flow, patient flow unit for the last eight years. So your presentation is um, entitled, he goes back, Providing Appropriate Care for Residents in Aged Care. So we welcome you for your presentation. Thank you so much. And we'll just, do you want me to do this? So, in typical ambulance style, the name of this project is an acronym. So it's PAC for RAC. So if that translated does mean, as we've just heard, providing appropriate care for residents in aged care. So according to this, to Stephen Johnson, people not often credit good ideas to that individual eureka sort of light bulb moment. But innovation happens when chance favours the connected mind. So our chance occurred over pre-dinner cocktails at the 2015 New South Wales Health Awards when this lady, Leslie Jordan, came up to the ambulance colleague I was with and asked her a question, which was, where did you get that fabulous green dress that you're wearing? So once we'd established where said green dress had been purchased from and we introduced ourselves, the next question was, so where do you work? Now it turned out that Leslie used to work in the finance department at New South Wales Health, but three months before had taken up the C CEO position at Twilight Aged Care, acronym TAC. So Twilight Aged Care Sorry, when Leslie found out that we worked at New South Wales Ambulance, she straight away said, I think we should partner up because I've been quite concerned about the number of times that my staff call triple zero for an ambulance when I don't think that the residents actually need one. Well, at that point, that's when two ambulance minds connected. As my colleague and I simultaneously thought, cost savings, less triple zero calls, reduced demand on ambulance, um, hospital avoidance, which you were talking about, and on top of that, we've got an aged care facility that actually wants to play with us. So that equaled five pretty big ticks across our connected ambulance minds. And before Leslie even realised it, I had my business card out of my, my wallet and in her hand so that she couldn't renege on what she'd sort of just proposed. So the following week when I was back at the office, I asked myself the first planning question, and that was, should we actually innovate and collaborate? Because all we had was Leslie's anecdotal evidence, but was she right? So Dr Google informed me that Twilight, that the TAC group, had five aged care facilities and that they were all located in the northern suburbs of Sydney. And it looked like they had some pretty sound governance around them as well. So I called Mel Willis, who is the manager um, PMO and partnerships at New South Wales Ambulance. And I started my call to Mel with, hi Mel, have I got an exciting opportunity for you? Now Mel loves data, so fortunately was quite excited about having a look at some data relating to TAC and she sent that through to me. Now the initial data showed that we had, um, New South Wales Ambulance had received 141 triple zero calls from the five TAC facilities within a 12 month period. And of those we transported 114 of them. And we'd actually taken them to hospitals that were all located within the Northern Sydney LH Local Health Di District. 
which is the acronym for that is NSLHD. So with that just initial information in hand, I thought, yep, this is something that's worth exploring further. We should be looking at what opportunities we have here. So the next quick planning question I asked myself was, did we have all the partners we needed? We had TAC and we had ourselves, but who else is involved in this process? Who else is making decisions about the health care that the Twilight residents receive? And also making decisions about where that's being received and how. So of course the answer to that was Northern Sydney LHD, where we were transporting them all to. So I called a friend, Deb Stewart, who happens to work there, and I started my call with, Hi Deb, have I got an exciting opportunity for you? And fortunately, both Deb and the LHD were really keen to partner up. So I was now pretty confident that we had the partners that we needed, knowing that other partners such as the GPs and the primary health networks would actually need to become involved and engaged once the project itself started. So it was now, for, now time for connecting the partners' minds. And the challenge here was connecting three very different organisations with very different core businesses, structures, resources, expectations, an actual understanding of each other. So I started off by targeting the senior managers and executives and I set up a series of four planning meetings. Now the first agenda item I put up at the first meeting was designed to answer this question, which is how can we be innovative? Now we settled on using redesign methodology, which is a robust evidence-based project methodology designed by um, New South Wales Health. Now this would give us both the structure and a clear roadmap to follow, while still allowing other methods to be applied so that innovation could flourish. So the next planning question was where can we be innovative partners? And we decided on the agency for, sorry, the Centre for Healthcare Redesign, which is CHR, 20-week um, grad cert program. So this is run by one of New South Wales Health's pillars called the Agency for Clinical Innovation, or ACI, and it's run in partnership with the University of Tasmania. And by go using this, by putting, collaborating under this 20-week program, that would provide us with a supported, or the project team with a supported environment on neutral territory where the project team could, could bond and learn whilst receiving project-related advice from the ACI and UTAS teams. It would also give the project some framework as the project's governance, so things like scope, objectives, reporting systems, all of those sorts of things would firstly need to be defined by the project team themselves, then endorsed by each of the um, sponsors from the three organisations before being marked um, and assessed against the academic requirements. Through the program, the team members themselves would also receive um, project coaching from the New South Wales Ambulance and Northern Sydney LHD redesign leads. Now, a value add, um, a value add for the organisation ourselves was that we would have staff who would be integrating and knowledge sharing with the broader health system, with colleagues from the broader health system, when they attended the 19 face-to-face -face days that they'd be required to attend. And then a benefit for the project team members themselves was that they would um, end up with, courtesy of New South Wales Health, a grad cert qualification. So the next planning question was how will we collaborate? What rules and frameworks were we going to put around the collaboration? Did we even have a common understanding of what collaboration meant? And how were we going to manage the issues as they arise? So as a guide, I introduced the partners to this collaboration model, which I had previously helped ACI and a company called Twyford's develop. Now, as you can see, there are different levels that you move to and then through as your collaboration matures. 
And as you graduate through them, you're actually increasing your organisation's capability and capacity to collaborate, which in turn increases the trust between the partners and ultimately the value created. So the last planning question to answer was which minds should we connect? Now we all agreed that each organisation should nominate someone for the project team, but importantly, we agreed that this person should not be nominated solely on their position within the organisation, but also on that person's skills, capabilities and attributes. And that's because we wanted them to succeed and we wanted this project to succeed and we wanted this collaboration to succeed. And having those three wants demonstrated that even before the project itself had started, at a senior and executive level, all of our, our, all of our minds had connectively agreed on why we were actually there. And that was for the people that were going to benefit the most when we succeeded, which of course were the aged care residents of Twilight, who in the future would be avoiding the distress of unnecessary trips to hospital via ambulance. So you might have gathered that the person that we nominated from New South Wales Ambulance on the project team was Jonathan here. And that's why he received a phone call from me that of course I started with, Hi Jonathan, have I got an exciting opportunity for you. Thanks Anna. Um, I know Julie mentioned that uh, there was resistors out in the community and I think when Anna sort of said, oh, Jonathan, I've got something, you know, something to tell you. I think I was initially resistant. So um, I was quite busy at the time. Uh, I was in a role that was um, looking after hospital delays um, and turnaround time. So there was pressure on me already. And then I was thinking, there's no way I can squeeze anything else in. But then I thought about it. And then I thought, no, oh, hang on. There's something to this. Um, you, got my, you got my ear. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Just add there, he didn't really have a choice, but anyway, <laughs> if he thinks he did, that's good. Yeah, thanks, Al. So, as she said, um, so Pack for Ack was born. So, we had to come together as a team and figure out what we wanted to do. And the, the title in pretty much says it all. It's providing appropriate care for residents in aged care. We, uh, we put the C in the middle, the four around it, because we've got the four C's there, collaboration, communication, care and comfort. So it's all about the patient. All right, so what was the case for change? So Anna sort of um, looked at the initial data, but I had to get more data just to ensure that, you know, we got everything covered. So within 2015, there was, within North Sydney Local Health District, across all residential aged care facilities, there was 5,800 calls to ambulance. Out of the 5,800 calls, 4,000 were admitted to North Sydney LHD facilities. Now, um, the good thing was working with the LHD, they provided me with some numbers as well. So with an average length of stay of 6.6 .6 days for some of these patients, at a cost of almost $1,500 a day, and a cost of about $400 per ambulance response, it equated to about 26,500 bed days, or 39, just under $39 million. Now we weren't looking at that scale, we were looking at the, four, the, the five twilight aged care facilities. So we looked at that. So there was actually 147 calls to ambulance, 141 of them were transported, 27 discharged from ED. So there was already 33 cases where they didn't really have to go to ED. 114 uh, were admitted to the facilities and if we use the same numbers, 752 bed days or just over a million dollars. So there was definitely a, you know, an area that we could work on. So we all know we love data. So having data um, provided by three agencies, um, or three organisations, so Ambulance, the local health district, as well as Twilight Aged Care, we were able to work out some focus areas that we could focus on and look at some root causes. So. If you can just read it out there. So the five main areas that we looked at were understanding and access to care to, to management plans. So that's things like your palliative care plans, 
uh, authorised care plans, palliative care plans, all those care management plans that are provided to the residents or the patients. Um, so having access to those. Staff not being confident with the management of acute care conditions. So we're talking within aged care facilities, of course. Limited access and cost to services, especially after hours and um, calling in for mobile x-rays and other services. I know for many of the paramedics out there, um, lack of structured handovers. So it was initially for paramedics, but then on further investigations, it's handovers at all levels. So it's your carers to their supervisors, the supervisors to facility managers, and ultimately they're you know, the managers to paramedics and paramedics to hospital. And then we also notice amongst the five facilities that there's inconsistent processes uh, to escalate care within facilities. So we, pro we uh, mapped all facilities and um, every facility was different. You know, we're talking, if we break it down in number of steps, uh, one facility called an ambulance, I think on step eight, and then the other one was you know, step 31. So you know that they was trying to do something in between um, before calling an ambulance. So collaboration assists in a number of aspects. So as you can see, we conducted a workshop. Uh, the workshop was able to, with the workshop, we were able to validate um, those uh, key issues and also at the same time we were able to look at developing some solutions at the same time. But collaboration, the only way we were able to get some solutions to appeal to everyone was to get pretty much everyone involved. So as I mentioned, you know, your, your, primary, your, um, your assistants, their supervisors, the facility managers, we had extended care paramedics, we had um, uh, outreach services attending as well for APAC. Uh, we had um, local health district um, executive. And then the other thing that we noticed that we needed was the doctors on board. So we got the primary health networks uh, involved as well. As well as our redesign um, leads and Anna and Deb also helped out there. So I'd like to say we came up with one uh, solution. We came up with a few. <laughs> so um, as you know, when you have a, a number of solutions, you've got to try to prioritise them. And that's what we did. So some of the things that we sort of looked at prioritising, you know, considering that we didn't really have a budget, so we had to um, pretty much uh, do with what we had. So there was... Um, discussions about, okay, let's improve the education to the carers as well the, as, as the aged care facilities. Um, look at impro improving handovers. So at the moment, um, ambulance user, New South Wales ambulance user um, acronym called ISBAR. Um, so we were trying to implement that without, within the aged care facilities. We thought with the education, we might be able to improve things with the hospital in the home or the APAC flow charts and provide some education to them. And the other thing that we noticed by having the primary health network and the doctors represent at the workshop was they weren't aware of what services were on offer, so they couldn't tap into them. So the other key thing was when we had all these solutions and we want to look at implementing them, we had to keep the, uh, the residents, the staff and the families updated because they're pretty much our, our main customer. So what did we do? We sent out flyers, they, up date, they updated the internet, the LHD also up, updated their internet as well as the primary health network. Uh, we've done regular surveys to ensure that um, of the, the level of communication was sufficient. Uh, we provided um, post surveys, post education sessions as well. And I put a little summary there that you know, it enables better understanding, integration and collaboration amongst all stakeholders by getting them involved and keeping them up to, uh, up to date. So implementation and education was not always easy, especially when you've got th oh, three or four agencies all working together. So we had to be flexible, especially when uh, we've got uh, outreach services trying to provide some education to these aged care facilities. So trying to organise a time that was suitable for all parties was almost near impossible. 
but hence why we end up um, having two or three sessions to you know, um, incorporate as many staff as we could. And we incorporated you know, the low-level carers as well because they were the ones that really put up their hands at the workshops to say, we're not confident, we need some assistance. So um, we've got a geriatrician, Angela. Uh, she was role-playing and she wasn't easy. She was hard. She put me to shame in some of my uh, diagnosis. So um, it was really good. It made, it made all the staff think about what to look out for. Oh, the other thing that I, I failed to mention was there was a uh, discussion uh, regarding uh, advanced care directives and palliative care plans and things like that. So uh, Twilight Aged Care utilises a, a system called Care First and within their, um, when they print off their handover notes and you know, provide it to paramedics or to doctors, there wasn't a section to indicate if there was an advanced care directive or any sort of plan in place for them. So um, Jeff, their IT guru, um, managed to um, make a few, few phone calls and they actually tweaked their own system to have drop down fields to indicate if they do have a plan in place. So now when they print off the uh, handover sheet on the patient records, that's the first thing they can look at. Do they actually have some sort of care management plan? So it's been pretty good. We talked about improving the, um, you know, trying to simplify um, a step-by-step -step process for them to be able to follow. So these are the ho um, hospital and the home flowcharts, and these were tweaked to um, make it easier for especially the, the um, personal care assistants to manage. So there was things like UTIs, you know, falls is a big um, discussion point, confusion, uh, dehydration, and a couple of other things there. It's pretty much got a what to do, and then it's a bit of a process there, so it's nice and simple for them. Handovers, massive, you know. Um, I can remember as a paramedic we would attend a, a resident, and then the handover, some of the issues we got was, it's not my patient. I just started shift. Um, <laughs> you name it, we got it. So they agreed that um, they need to improve their handovers. As I said, ambulance have been utilising an acronym called ISBAR. Um, Twilight Aged Care went one better, and they said, we're going to take that acronym and make it our own and tweak it. So they changed uh, the R for recommendation at the very end. So to notification and documentation. So now it's introduction, situation, background, assessment, notification and documentation. So that can be utilised at all levels within that facility. All right. I guess the results. So we started this in 2016, um, going off 2015 data. So in 2015, there was 166 responses. If we broke it down into in the um, triple O or priority one, priority two responses, there was 96 of them. 70 were pre-scheduled, so they were um, bookings made for an appropriate, within a, an agreed time frame. So as you can see, basically our objectives were if we could reduce the number of calls by 25% during our period, I think we've done well. And the other thing was if we can reduce the number of uh, low acuity uh, conditions being transported uh, to hospital by 50%, we'll be doing well as, as well. So during our period, we we're able to reduce all responses by 34%. If we broke it down into lights and sirens jobs, we reduced that by 32% and 37% by your, um, your time appropriate booking. So we were quite, you know, we we're quite chuffed with those results. I guess there's lessons learnt with any sort of project. So the big one for us was management of time, uh, work versus project versus personal. It's trying to squeeze all that time in. Uh, it's really hard, especially when you've got so many agencies involved. But if everyone's got a, you know, the vested interest about managing the patient and looking after them, um, and we even got you know, really good support from the families in regards to, you know, oh, I see you're trying to live, you know, you're trying to look after my mum or my dad at, at, um, at home. 
um, th you know, they were so supportive, so that really helped us, you know, motivate us to, to do more. Uh, regular engagement of sponsors. We all know how hard it is um, to get direction sometimes, but if you've got your know, support from your sponsors, they definitely do make a, a bit of assistance in trying to get some direction and some clarification. Uh, need to share responsibilities. It's not a one-man show. You know, you need to share the love. There's a lot of tasks involved, especially when trying to do like a project. Um, I mentioned flexibility, and the other thing I, <laughs> I noticed, even though it was a bit later in the piece, was ensuring version control with your documents. So uh, <laughs> make sure, especially when you're sending out documents for review or comments, there's some sort of version control on that. So the future looks good. So since then, uh, Twilight Aged Care have actually put on a, an educator. They advertise for an educator for the Twilight Aged Care facilities. Uh, they're on deck. Uh, we're doing a collaboration of an education package for them. So that will incorporate training from the local health district and the hospitals as well as uh, will assist with ambulance. Uh, Twilight Aged Care is you know, continuing to look for collaborative uh, work and North Sydney Local Health District are now identifying other residential aged care facilities that we can pretty much mimic the pat for act model at some of the others. So I passed. Um, and I guess, you know, without the support of the project team, so Jackie Edgeley, the Director of Nursing at Motorvale, uh, Claire Bannister, one of the facility managers for Twilight Aged Care, Anna, Mel, um, all part of the redesign um, project team. Uh, Leslie Jordan, the, you know, especially you know, the fact that she's the, the CEO of Twilight Aged Care and she was keen to help out. Um, and our executive sponsors within Ambulance as well. So um, without them, couldn't have done it without it. So pretty exciting time that we're able to look at um, replicating this at some of the other facilities throughout the year. Thank you.